Reggie here, your friendly neighborhood bodybuilder and comic book collector, and I want to welcome you to my live stream. It is 9 o'clock, 9.30 on a Friday. Uh, my wife just went upstairs and I thought that I would jump on here and go live and unbox uh, a box that arrived earlier this week and also show you guys just a couple of books from my trip to Seattle. Uh, none of these books are going to be major books, but they it is um, a run of a story arc that I've heard wonderful things about and I'm actually excited to read it. Uh, I was debating if I wanted to record a video of it or just go live and I decided again to just go live to show you guys a couple of the books that, um, that are from that haul. Uh, we've actually taken a little bit of a break from doing uh, the What Was Uncle Thinking haul. I think I'm up to like four videos that have already been released and I have, I don't know, another three or so to go. There were a lot of books in that short box. So uh, let's see who's all here in the room. Got a couple of people here already. Uh, Mr. Roboto, how you doing brother? Brian, it's good to see you guys. Uh, this is definitely not a, a time at which I normally go live, so we'll see who shows up. Uh, but I, I appreciate you guys hanging out uh, on the late night with me. Hopefully you guys are having a good Friday too. So this package arrived um, a couple of days ago from a, an, a guy in the community who actually participated in my trivia night. He won, um, I think it was like maybe trivia night two, maybe he won and he sent me back um, some books to offer up as part of the next trivia night. So I wanted to go ahead and unbox those and then I'll take a look at some of the books that I picked up from this mini haul. So we'll check that out. Uh, gorilla, yeah, I don't know about that, brother. It's good to see you, but I don't know about that whole makeup thing. <laughs> nice, Brian, it's nice to have a weekend off, man. Nothing like that, right? Get, get a chance to catch up on all the stuff that you don't get a chance to do during the week. So I hope you, uh, you have a very good weekend, my man. Comic Lover Omega, you have not missed a thing. I see that I saw some of your comments, man, on in, on Instagram earlier. Uh, so I guess you uh, like the Corvac video. I finally got a chance to release that thing. I recorded that video weeks ago and just have not found the right moment to release it. Uh, and then I had the whole, uh, you know, what was Uncle Thinking series that I had to film and uh, that video kept getting pushed back and pushed back. And so I finally was able to get the uh, Corvac video out. So if you guys haven't seen that, you might want to check that video out. But uh, in that video, we actually speculate as to who the next big bad could actually be in the MCU. There's a lot of uh, wagers and things like that on um, on Galactus showing up, Silver Surfer, and of course those things could happen, but you never know. All right, so this little package here is from someone who won Trivia Night. Uh, guy's name is Matt. Matt sent this over, uh, and he also included a note in here, and the note says, some books for Trivia Night. Love the channel plus your Instagram. Thanks for answering messages and helping out the comic fan. I threw in a copy of White Whale's comics favorite covers from his video. The 9.6 versus 9.8, uh, ab, I'm sorry, 9.6 versus 9.8 collaboration is great. Oh, cool. Oh, this is um, Gray Matter Hulk. Very nice. Very nice. I don't always remember people's screen names or connect the screen name to the real name. So it's nice when people can actually tell me what that is. That's super helpful. So he threw in a couple of books here. He says for, for Trivia Night. And then he threw in, I guess, something for me, maybe. Uh, it's a copy of White Whale's comics' favorite cover. So I may need to go back and look at White Whale's video to see which ones he's talking about here. Oh, I think I know which one it is. All right, so he put some cool books in here. He put a couple of cool books in here. Johnny Future, how you doing? Glad you can make it to the live feed here, man. It's always good to see you guys. It's always nice when people can actually show up for the live feed because it's a little bit different than watching the videos, right? Um, you watch the videos kind of in isolation. When you show up in here, we get to have an opportunity to, uh, to interact a little bit more. So welcome to you, Johnny Future. All right, so uh, Gray Matter Hulk sent over a couple of books. The first one he sent was Batman White Knight. It's actually a pretty cool cover. 
I just finished editing a video a few moments ago and I actually included in that video a cool um, snapshot of Joker in there. Thought you guys might like to see some DC stuff in some of my videos besides just Marvel stuff, so I sent that in there. Uh, all right, so the next book is Uncanny X-Men 169. There's another cool one right here. I think I have this book already. This is, I think, when Angel actually loses his, his wings in this episode, I do believe. So that's a cool book. I think I have a copy of that. This is actually a really nice copy, too. There's like one, one a couple of spine ticks, nothing major, but it's actually, it's actually a nice book. Wow. Next up, one of my favorite stories, story arcs, is uh, Spider-Man from the 90s. If you, if you were collecting in the 90s, you, you know all about this Todd McFarlane stuff here. So this is Spider-Man number 18, cool book there. And next up, he included number 19, uh, Spider-Man. These are all, these are both newsstands. I'd have to go back and look at my books. I don't even think I have newsstands, which is kind of cool. He also included Generation X, uh, number one, this is a shiny foil cover that I believe uh, Whitewell Comics was actually talking about in his video. I do believe this is the one that he uh, he spoke about. Let's see if this if this is a wraparound. It looks like it is. Yeah, it's pretty cool. So you can see the back side of this thing. It's a cool little book. Front side, back side. Cannot go wrong with foil. Cannot go wrong. That's how I got my tail kicked in Comic Wars the other day. Foil got me. <laughs> so let me get this thing here. I'll just set it off to the side. Let's we'll stick it back in there in a moment. And then the last book that he sent over is uh, X Factor number 109. Pretty cool book there. I have I picked up a collection not too long ago, and the guy was an X Factor fan, and he actually had a ton of this particular uh, run in his collection. So who else? Gorillas here and Jill. How you doing, Jill? It's not often that we get women in the chat, so it's good to see you. I check my statistics, and it's always like 99.9% .9 men. So Jill, welcome, welcome to the chat. Ruben, how you doing, brother? It's good to see you. All right, so the other thing that I wanted to do and I'll recap those uh, those books in just a moment. Uh, those books actually came from Great Matter Hulk, uh, who is uh, a former trivia winner. He sent over a couple of cool books to uh, allow me to give away back to the community as part of Trivia Night. So I'll run back through those books in just a moment. Um, but what I also wanted to do was to show you guys a couple of books from um, that haul that I've been doing. What was Uncle thinking? So if you if you've missed that. You guys gotta go back and watch it. Um, we are on now volume two. I have had the, the privilege, the honor of um, going through a collection from a, um, a, guy's, a guy's collection that his family has essentially inherited. And the family has graciously invited me up a couple of times and given me an opportunity to like go through the collection and identify books and things like that that I've wanted. And, um, I recently went up there last weekend uh, and picked up a short box full of comics, just some amazing stuff. And so if you have a chance, go watch the videos because there's a couple of really cool books in there. Um, but one of the other really cool things is that they actually picked out books for me to give back to the community. Um, and so I have a nice stack of books at, that I'll be giving away as part of my next trivia night in addition to those books from Grey Matter Hulk that came in in addition to some books from Kingpin Comics. So you guys have been very gracious as a, as a community in allowing me to be a conduit to actually, you know, give books away to people. So I, I definitely appreciate all the tokens of appreciation. So, and I think most people do appreciate that as well. Uh, Johnny Future is saying he lives near Seattle. Um, he hasn't seen the series, brother, you brother, check it out. I'm Trust me, we are on volume two because I've made two trips. So this is volume two. And there are some really, really cool books. I released, um, I think, four videos this week just on what was Uncle Thinking. I have another two or three left to go, um, and I'll start those again on Monday. So um, check it out if you get a chance. They're, they're definitely some cool books. I don't know when the next time I'll be up there it will be, um, Johnny. 
Um, I go whenever uh, the family extends um, an invitation to go. Uh, so we'll see when the next time might be. I've, I made two trips or so in the last, in the last maybe two months. So who knows? And um, and and the uh, the holidays are coming up. So who knows what that's going to look like? Most people get relatively busy. I mean, you know that. So we'll see. We'll see. Also, you've seen some, but not all. Yeah, there's some cool stuff in there, man. So if you get a chance. All right. So th this. I was going through I was going through the boxes and I saw one of these books as I was you know, flipping through boxes and I could not believe that I found this series because just the week before I was watching another YouTuber who I who I enjoy uh, this guy comics explain uh, fantastic YouTuber he has a he has an amazing voice that I find mesmerizing right so I listen to this guy as I'm going uh, to and from work some days uh, just because his videos are really long and they they tell a story and so I I was watching his one of his videos on something called Earth X, and Earth X is something that I've never heard of before. I've never heard of the book, the story arc, none of it. And so he's basically telling the story of what Earth X is all about. So it's a little bit of a spoiler if you intend to read the book or the books. But for me, sometimes it it is and a way to kind of take a look at a series without buying the series to see if there's anything interesting there. But he does such a good job telling this story that you can walk away with a wonderful impression as to whether that story is good or bad, which I think is really awesome. And I think he also does a lot of this off the top of his head, which I find strangely fascinating that he can actually keep all of this stuff in his head and keep it all straight. Um, but I'm actually going to show you guys uh, uh, some books from a story arc that he talked about just recently. So let me get caught up here real quick on the chat because I see more people kind of piling in. So I don't want to miss the opportunity. Uh, JD is here. How you doing, brother? Uh, Tony Mills is here. Uh, yeah, the, the, Tony, the, the stack that I'm going to show you right now isn't like a crazy exciting stack. It's a cool stack if you know about the series. Um, the videos that I released earlier this week, those have a couple of silver age, copper age gems in there. And then the ones that I'll be releasing next week have, I think one of them has a really cool silver age book in it as well. So that's where like the sexy stuff will be. This isn't as sexy, but it's, it's cool because of the story arc. So, um, I don't want you to think that some magic is coming. Um, so let me check, catch up here. Tony is here. How you doing, Tony uh, Trombetta? It's good to see you, brother. And yes, Jill, it is very fun because there are roughly 400 long boxes in this storage facility. And uh, if you like to hunt in comics, hunting in, a, in an environment where you can just go is really cool. But it is also a challenge because it's a lot. There's a lot of boxes. So um, we have managed to go through a healthy chunk of the boxes and it is definitely a fun activity because you never know what you're going to find in the next box or even within the next book sometimes because there's so many books and so many titles and it's not like perfectly organized that you can go from like G.I. Joe to like X-Men within the same box just from one book to the next. So it's definitely a very, very fun experience. So the, the title that I found in the boxes when I was going through that really caught my attention because I had just learned about the title the days before is something called Earth X. And this is actually one of the, the books here. This is, um, I probably should, oh, this is X. I don't know what, they're not in the best order, at least from my understanding of numbering. So this is like X and then this one is zero. And I'm not sure if X and zero came first or if X and zero came last. I'm honestly not sure. Um, but the first one is this one right here. Now, what makes this story arc uh, really cool, and I think it's a 12 part story arc plus uh, X and zero, yes, 12 part story arc, is that in this series, everyone on earth has superpowers. That's like the premise of this thing. Somehow or another, everyone on earth has superpowers. And so therefore, the uh, superheroes aren't necessarily needed because their whole job is to save people 
who don't have powers, but everyone has powers. And so it, the earth just becomes chaos because everyone is super powered. Governments start to destabilize. Captain America is like shunned and becomes a little bit of like an outcast slash renegade slash rebel fighter. I mean, it is an um, if you listen to this dude tell this story, you will run out and buy this book or buy this story or because it is that good. But just look at the cover. This is Captain America right here on the cover. In all of his glory, that is Captain America. But th this story arc, and I'm not gonna give it away, I'm not gonna give the whole thing away, but because, because there's a lot to it. Um, here's number two. But if you see this story arc out there, you may wanna pick it up, or a little Red Skull action there, woo! Or you may want to, uh, to um, pick up some digital copies or something like that. I checked, and unfortunately, this is number four, Unfortunately, this story arc is actually not on Marvel Unlimited, which is a little bit of a, a disappointment to me um, because it's my way of, of reading older books sometimes is I like to have the book, but then I like to read it on, um, this is number seven, on Marvel Unlimited because it allows me to kind of read in bed and read around my kids without fear of tearing up a book. This is actually The Incredible Hulk. And I believe that that is Bruce Banner in the back. Oh, I don't want to give it away. There is some really cool stuff in here. This is number eight. But these are definitely some cool books here. This is uh, number nine. There is some inhuman action there. You can see Black Bolt right there in the middle of this one. I mean, this, this story arc is cool. There is, uh, they have some Machine Man. This is number 10. That's Machine Man in the middle of this uh, this issue this is number 11 you can see some celestials down there i mean just from the covers alone you get some idea of what this thing is all about here is number 12 and you see some uh silver surfer action there i mean just from the covers alone you get some idea of what this story arc is all about but it is a uh, 12 part series uh and it, it's called earth x and then i think there's like Universe X, I think is the other one. That was also in a box and I may I may get that one as well, but I, this was a lot of books and so I wanted to try to get this one and actually maybe read it um, and see how I like it before I get Universe X. But uh, again, just a, a couple of cool books that I, I picked up as part of this haul. So let me get caught up here real quick. Um, <laughs> Brian Bigelow says he would go broke. Yes, brother, it is a daunting task to have uh, that many boxes, that many books, and want to take them all home. <laughs> My challenge was I flew up and uh, I actually came better prepared this time. I actually took a short box with me, flat short box, and uh, popped the short box open, and I had a plan. My goal was to have my two carry-ons, my suitcase, which contained my clothes and my food, because I still travel with food, uh, and then um, I popped up the short box, and what I ended up doing was putting my uh, short box of comics underneath the seat next to me. Thankfully, uh, I had an empty seat next to me and the box fit perfectly under the seat and the carry-on, my uh, clothes actually went in the, the overhead. And my, my plan was if they forced me to check a bag, you clearly know which one was gonna be checked. It was not going to be the comics. So, uh, Mr. Roboto says three miniseries by Alex Roth, Earth X, Universe S, Paradise X. Are, are these all Alex Roth covers? I haven't even looked, to be honest with you. His name's not mentioned on the cover, but that just might be because he only did the covers. But yeah, if that's, if that's the case, that's definitely cool. Um, I honestly picked it up because I just thought it was a really cool story arc, but if it happens to be some Alex Ross magic, I mean, this, this one looks like Alex Ross. There's a couple of them that look like him um, because that it has that... I don't know, he has, a, he has a, a, a look to some of his work. This one doesn't necessarily look like him, um, but this is also zero, so who knows whether this one came after. But I'll, I'll crack them open and check it out, and if that's the case, Mr. Roboto, thank you in advance, brother, for giving me the heads up on that one. Um, Buff Muffin is here, how you doing, brother? 
Don Dizzle says that uh, Earth X sounds interesting. It definitely is. And, and I knew that there was a Universe X, Mr. Roboto, but I did not know about Paradise X. So I may have to look that one up. I did not see that one in the box. But again, there's 400 boxes. So it could have been in the box right next to the one I was looking in. I just didn't see it. Um, Tony Sells says he's uh, just been enjoying the series. So I'm guessing, oh, you're, you're enjoying the... Um, what was Uncle Thinking series or Earth X? Not clear. Uh, Got to go to work, but I'll be back. Johnny, thank you for stopping in, brother. It is good to see you. I'm glad you were able to catch a live show uh, for a little while here. The Uncanny Kyle, how you doing, brother? It's good to see you. Omega Comics is here. How you doing, brother? Um, which is your favorite cut? So Ultra 7 is asking, what is my favorite comic book or story? Um, so I would say, you know, most of it, man, honestly, anything Spider-Man related, I'm a big fan of, uh, when it comes to X-Men, the Chris Claremont run, that, that stuff is definitely a favorite giant size X-Men is probably my favorite X-Men book out of like the number ones in general. Um, Avengers versus X-Men is another really cool story arc that I'm, I'm enjoying or have enjoyed, I, I should say. Um, this Earth X, if it lives up to what I've heard, it could also be a really good read. Um, but maybe that, that helps. Maybe that helps. Again, Spider-Man stuff, man, as you see on the back wall there, is some of my favorite stuff for sure. Um, Mr. Roboto says he's the cover artist and his plot. Very cool. Very cool. Is that somewhat related to um, the DC title that, that I tried to read recently? because it sounds a little this one right here kingdom come isn't this one like a post-apocalyptic kind of thing too maybe not maybe not but I, I don't know i just get that feeling that maybe he was uh alex ross was working on those books around the same time um uncanny kyle says yes he thinks that they're his there you go uh there was a universe x spidey issue that was recalled there was a printing error very excited if you got that one Really? Because I think I saw Spider-Man in here. I saw him on the cover. Is it uh, Earth X number eight? I think he's on the cover right there. Do you guys know? Oh yeah, like Marvel's version of Kingdom Come. There you go. See, do you, do you see the connection I just made there? And I'm not even a DC guy, but I just made that connection. So very cool, very cool. Um, again, people said really wonderful things about Kingdom Come. I, I couldn't get into it, but I think it was a very ambitious read for someone who is not really into DC. Um, so I will maybe try to read that one again at some point. So Maximum Carnage was the one that got you into Spider-Man. Very nice. So, uh, Tony, do you know Universe... Oh, it's, you said Universe X, Spidey issue. Okay, I thought you said Earth X. Sorry about that. All right, cool, cool. Giant Size X-Men is great because X or X. <laughs> yeah. Uh, good stuff, good stuff. Yeah, Giant Size X-Men, again, is, you know, if I had to pick between Giant Size X-Men and X-Men, I think Giant Size X-Men is, is like a really good read. And then the start of the Chris Claremont stuff, his 17-year run, like X-Men 94, that is a book that I want to get in my collection. It, it, was a, it was a really, really awesome read, and I'd love to add that book to my collection. Um, I've just never really seen that, that book out in the wild, but sooner or later, I will uh, add that book to the collection. And thank you for the kind words there, Tony Miles. Um, it is, it's a fun series, man. There's just a lot of books that I brought back with me. And as I began looking at the books, I realized just how many videos I was going to have to make because, you know, the last thing I want to do is go book after book after book after book after book uh, in a video and it becomes a little boring. So I like to, to chunk it up, but there were so many books that it became a lot of different videos. So um, I appreciate you guys bearing with me. And then, you know, I was always trying to put like a really big book in each um, in each video to kind of make it interesting for folks. Um, but because there were so many videos for what was Uncle Thinking, it kind of disrupted my whole uh, roll out of videos. Like I have a backlog of videos now because, you know, I was on this rhythm of basically releasing videos Monday through 
Monday through Wednesday, sometimes Monday through Thursday. And uh, because I released, you know, four videos over the course of three videos of uh, what was Uncle thinking, it kind of disrupted the apple cart there. So uh, we're gonna try to play catch up by running a couple of videos through this weekend and we'll release a couple of extra videos next week and hopefully be able to catch up. Uh, so we'll see. Uh, first appearance of Swamp Thing is almost the same level. The, uh, as uh, X-Men 93. Yeah, I, I don't know much about Swamp Thing, to be honest with you. Um, but what do you mean by almost the same level, Ultra 7? In terms of uh, the creativity of the writing, the style of the writing, the artwork, like what was your thought there with, uh, with the, the comparison of those two, um, those two price? Oh, gotcha, 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 okay. Yeah, I honestly haven't even really looked at the prices of 94. Um, you know, it was, uh, it's on my, I think it's on my 2018 want list. And it's just, I just have not had an opportunity to pick that book up. There's so many other books that I ended up picking up this year that, you know, you can't get them all and something ultimately becomes deprioritized because you're focused on other things. Um, but sooner or later, you know, I don't know if I'm going to continue buying any major books for the rest of this year, just because it's, you know, it's the holidays and, um, you know, you need to spend money on kids and, and presents for, uh, you know, family members and things like that, not necessarily for yourself. So I may be taking a, a little bit of a break. We'll see. Um, I still have a ton of content that I'll be releasing, you know, even though I may not be doing any unboxings, I think there's still a, a ton of, uh, a ton of content out there that I'll, I'll be releasing. I actually was working tonight on a, uh, a couple of cool videos, some things that are that I want to release that are a little different um, than the standard. You guys know I'm always trying to brainstorm different ideas and things like that. So I have a couple of cool things that, that are going to be a little bit of a departure maybe from some of the stuff that I've done, but I, I think it'll be hopefully, hopefully well received by you guys. Um, so Swamp Thing, we're saying here, the same writer, got it, got it. Uh, Swamp Thing will be a series on the new DC channel. Uh, very nice. And it's called Universe X Spider-Man. Gotcha. Gotcha. Thank you for looking. Thank you for giving me the details, guys, on those two things that you guys were just talking about. I appreciate that. Tony's talking about that DD-1 that I picked up. Woo! Woo! That DD-1 was a monster, wasn't it? <laughs> that DD-1, brother. When I saw photos of that book before even going, I was... I, whew, that was, I had my sight set on that book. But here's the thing, that's not the book that got me the most excited. That is not the one that got me the most excited. I'll just say that. There is something else that's coming next week that for me is a, is a really, really cool book. And that's not, uh, that's not the poo-poo on DD1, because DD1 was, it's solid. Uh, and I've actually, I've never actually seen DD1 personally in such good shape. Um, what was crazy is I was helping this guy who was trying to get into comic book collecting. He was a local guy. He came to my house. He bought some books for me, like dollar books that I was selling, um, you know, parts of collections that I didn't necessarily want. And we struck up a conversation and I was trying to coach the guy on like, you know, how to collect and what to look for. It was around the time that I, that I originally started doing my videos. I might've been maybe 15 videos in or something like that. So I'm still trying to figure this stuff out myself, but uh, I'm in the gym working out and he sends me a photo of, uh, of a daredevil book that he's thinking about buying. And it was just, it was just ugly. <laughs> it was just, it was beat up. It was a raw book. Uh, and, uh, you know, I'm in the gym and I'm trying to, you know, look at this book and advise this guy on whether he should buy it or not. I'm giving him things to think about. And it was, it was an ugly book. It was just beat up. It had rust all over the staples. Um, and so that's been my experience with like Daredevil books, that they've always been rough because of that white cover, maybe because just back then people didn't know and they didn't take the best care of those books. So my experience was always like low grade books, right? Um, and when I saw this one, I was like, this is a really, really nice book. And then when I saw it in person, I was like, you were going home with me. So definitely pumped to have that Daredevil in the collection. It's actually in the box sitting behind me and will be going off to, uh, to get graded sometime soon. So 
uh, get caught up here. Love the Giant Size X Men number one. Got a uh, copy seven years ago, bro. That woo, you got a good deal then. If you picked that up seven years ago, that is an amazing deal. I see. I saw some guy on Instagram like a couple of months ago. He had ten copies of Giant Size X Men one, and I'm like, dude. I, I wish that I had been collecting back in the day, you know, because as I've said to a couple of people, as you look at this wall behind me, as attractive as that wall is, I don't think I owned any of those books when I started this year, except for two, the, the, um, the New Mutants book and the X-Men First Appearance of Gambit. Those were the only two books that I owned on that wall when this year started. And um, it has been a heck of a year. You know, JD did his contest recently. I think it's uh, ending tomorrow on what you're thankful for. And I, in my video response to him, I focused on this comic book community and I focused on my wife as the two things that I'm thankful for. But um, if I were to add a couple more, at some place on that list would just be what I've been able to accomplish this year in terms of uh, growing my collection and making it something that I can be proud of, you know? And when I look at that wall behind me, uh, I reflect upon how fortunate I am and how um, just about anything is possible if you set your mind to it, you know? I, I talk to guys occasionally who will say like they're jealous of the wall and things like that. And for me, it's not about jealousy. You know, I don't, I don't want people to be jealous. I want people to, to, to believe that they can that they can do it too. You know, you, you, your means and your method to do it might be different than mine, um, but anything is possible, you know? So um, Kyle says he got himself a low grade copy of 94 a few weeks back, a few years back. Very nice, brother. Very nice. I think, is that the book? I wanna say there's like a spread with like Cyclops, like close up on his face. I found that spread in that book just so compelling. And as I got to that page, I was like, I am getting this book. <laughs> but uh, congratulations on that, Kyle. Uh, it's definitely a really cool book to have. And, and I hope to be able to add that one to my collection at, at some point. So uh, Ultra 7 is saying, what number of Daredevil? Gotta watch the video, bro. Gotta watch the video. <laughs> uh, Mr. Uh, Garrell? I don't even know how you say that. How you doing, brother? JD says, yes, his uh, thankful contest ends tomorrow. He's giving away some really cool, uh, I think, signed books. I actually don't even know what he's giving away. I think it is signed books, but I don't know which ones. Uh, a lot of times when I do the contest to support someone, I do it because of the person, not necessarily because of the prize. The prize is cool, but I try not to set my, my, my hopes on winning something that I may not win, so I do it out of appreciation for the person, not necessarily for the gift. But if I do win, I'll be doing a video. <laughs> uh, Brett Hess says, so many great comics, so many great pieces of art. You are correct, sir. Uh, so many great comics, so many great pieces of art. Only so much wall space and money in my wallet as well. So there's always a balancing act, right? Between, uh, between all those things. So um, Mr. Roboto says he bought Uncanny X-Men 94 off a spinner rack in a drugstore and bought two copies when he was in his teens. Immaculate copy, sold them when he went to college with a uh, run from night. Oh my goodness. Ouch. So do you have any now, bro? Do you have any? Because that sound, I, I was excited right up until the point where I read you sold them. <laughs> oh, you are not old, brother. Come on now. If, if you're old, you're going to make us all old. So let's not start that stuff. Um, uh, King of the Golden State, how you doing, brother? I have not been live probably in, it's been like over a week since I've been live. There was a stretch there where I was like live every day for like three weeks or something like that. But I haven't been, uh, been haven't been live as much uh, as of late. I've been doing a lot of, uh, a lot of pre-recorded videos and releasing those videos. My life has just been a little bit more hectic now. So, um, Gray Matter Hulk says, what books are left from your 2018 wish list? Remember the first appearance of Mary Jane and amazing. So brother, what's crazy is I was actually looking off to my right here because I was trying to find my stack. Remember, I don't know if you guys remember early on, I actually did little cutouts 
of all the books that I wanted for that were on my wish list. I, I thought this was a different way of doing it. Uh, and then I misplaced some of the daggone things. So we have this one right here. This was on the wish list. Uh, Iron Man number 55, first appearance of Thanos. We actually picked that one up. There's a 9.4 back there on the wall. This first appearance of Apocalypse was on the list. This one didn't make the wall, but it is in a box. Uh, I, I guess that one was like a 9.6 maybe. We picked up uh, not one, but two copies of Hulk 181. We have an 8.5 back there on the wall, and then we have a Signature Series 5.0 from Stan Lee in a box. We picked up this one, uh, Amazing Spider-Man 50, first appearance of Kingpin. This one is actually uh, double-signed. Yeah, this one's double-signed by John Romita and Stan Lee, and it is back there on the wall at a 7.0. Actually picked it up at a 7.5, and somehow, I slipped half a grade. Not salty about that one at all. <laughs> this one was high on the of the want list, um, and it was uh, deprioritized when the Dark Phoenix trailer came out and the book just took off. So I actually deprioritized that, but I managed to pick it up. It's back here on the wall. A nine four of this picked it up from a guy who um, had some damage to his house for a storm and uh, reached out to me because he knew that I was interested in the book. So uh, I went ahead and picked it up from him uh, to help him out and to help myself out. So it was a win-win. And then uh, the one of the last ones, because I, I misplaced a couple, there was this one, Amazing Spider-Man 31, uh, that I do not have. So this is the one book that I have in my stack that I still need to pick up. But I know that X-Men 94 was on the list. And off the top of my head, I cannot remember what, what else was on there. But the vast majority of what I set out to pick up this year, I was able to pick up plus a ton of other stuff as I kind of talked about already. Um, let me see. Seeing what am I, who's hitting up the Bay Area comic shows this weekend? King of the Golden State, brother. I'm not going outside. That air quality is bad. No, seriously. What comic sh uh, shows are this weekend? What's happening? Mr. D is here. How you doing, brother? Uh, uh, Tony Tony Trebet is asking how many more comics are going to fit on that wall. It might be time for an addition to the comic room. Funny, no. So um, I measured that out, and I think I got what sixteen books back there, something like that. The wall in front of me can actually accommodate fourteen. It's a shorter wall uh, because I have the door right there. But we are going to eventually move on to this front wall, and then of course I've got two other walls, right? So I'll find some space. I've got some really cool artwork up here from a, uh, an amateur artist. And uh, JD hooked me up with some cool art on this side. And then I recently was gifted some really cool art from RB3 that I'm gonna find a, a place for. And then I contracted a commission from a, another amateur artist who did a really cool Spider-Man for me. And it is en route to me now. So we'll probably find some space here in the room for it as well. But uh, my hope is to use this front wall to, uh, to put some additional slabs up there. So AZ Funk, how you doing? <laughs> AZ Funk said, <laughs> hang them from the ceiling. <laughs> Brian Bigelow is on the same humorous track. Yeah, man, I may have to at some point, you know, or we'll just moving and I'll get a bigger room. Maybe that, maybe that's the answer. <laughs> but uh, yeah, what's crazy though is because of this trip that I made uh, up north, I ended up having to add an extra box over here because I've got like a, a wall of short boxes off to my side and I had to add a couple of more boxes um, because of the amount of books that were coming in. Um, by the time I tried to fit them into the existing uh, short boxes, of course there wasn't room, so I had to give everything some breathing room, reorganize things, so I, I'm, uh, I may at some point run out of floor space too, we'll see. Uh, last thing I want is to be, you know, uh, trapped under a mountain of books, so what a, don't, don't, so no. Uh, Ultra is asking if the light, the, the lights are LEDs, I do believe, and LEDs, I don't think, fade comics. Um, but, you know, I, I do believe that's the case. And then uh, my window here has blackout uh, shades. There's a film that I apply to completely block out all light. So there's no light that comes into the room outside of the lights that I actually turn on. So. Brett Hess, I did. I did have a uh, a really great year. Um, it was. It's an impressive year, and I've actually been having some conversations with people along the lines of like, 
not not that I'm there, right? But I'm just trying to think through it. Like, at, at what what do you do when you get all of your, you know, all of your grails, all of your personal grails, all the books that you want? Do you do something different? And I don't know what the answer to that is, right? I, I have not gotten my my ultimate grail. That would be Amazing Fantasy 15, like just about every other Spider-Man fan out there. Um, but I don't, I don't know. I don't know what the future holds. I don't know if I'm going to change my collecting approach. I would say generally, I think that my my approach to collecting comics is starting to mature a little bit. And it's maturing because I have been able to secure so many of the books that I've always wanted. And I think I'm starting to be much more selective about the books that I go after. I'm not necessarily spending my money on just about everything uh, that, that comes out. Um, I'm being a little bit more selective and I think maybe smarter. Um, when, I, when I first came back into the hobby, I felt like I was playing catch up. Right, I, I used to. I would see the videos of all these guys with these amazing books, and I'd be like, "I need that. I should have that. I want that. That's a cool book. I, I remember seeing that in Wizard. I want that book." And so I spent a lot of time this year playing, feeling like I was playing catch up to the hobby. Um, and and now I'm looking at it a little bit differently. As I walk into this room and see what's here, I'm starting to really, really acknowledge and appreciate what I've been able to accomplish. And um, I'm, I'm starting to reevaluate things. I don't know that I have it all sorted out in my head, um, but I'm starting to reevaluate. So I think somebody said that they liked how I did this. Again, my whole thing, even from the beginning, was to be a little bit different. People had, you know, their 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 handwritten notes of their want list, and they would scratch it out. Which, and I'm not I'm not bashing that, but I, I like to do things a little bit differently. So um, for me, that's that's what's cool. So. Um, Thin the herd, do some sales. I'm sure you're plenty of, brother, I don't know, Mr. D. I'm not a big fan of selling stuff, man. I'm a, <laughs> I'm a collector, brother. I, you know what? Honestly, Mr. D, I actually did go through my slabs and I was going through and I'm like, I'm going to sell some stuff. And I went through four, four boxes of slab comics. Do you know how many uh, comics I identified to sell? Four. <laughs> That's how many, I identified four. And then when I looked at them, I was like, I don't even know if it's worthwhile. I've got Venom number one. That's one that I was thinking about selling. Venom number one. I have four 188, and I have a video coming out to explain how I screwed this one up. I'll, I'm not gonna explain it now. I'll, I'll explain my screw up another time. <laughs> the other book is Old Man, uh, Old Man Logan. Number 66, this is one that just came back from CGC. I'm gonna find this one a good home maybe. And then Venom Lethal Protector, 9.8. So I went through four boxes of slabs and the, I only came away with four books to sell. So I'm not the best seller, Mr. D. I'm just not. <laughs> uh, Tony's, Tony Miles is asking the grade on the 48. Uh, Fantastic Four 48, that is a 4.0. And then I have uh, two other Raws in a box behind me that are probably three fives, both of them. And then I have the four on the wall. So I picked that one up. Picked that one up, uh, picked those up several months ago, right before like the big run up, I went ahead and got those. Um, so Ultra 7 is, is asking if I want to run of certain series. Um, so, Yes, so it's a little bit of everything, right? So for me, my favorites are X uh, are X Men and Spider Man, and so what I am doing is putting together a run of Amazing Spider Man, right? Starting, um, you know, really in my head, I'm thinking at least one through two hundred. And um, I have a healthy number of the later Spider-Man, you know, the the one the the one hundred through two hundred, I mean, probably more like the seventy ish through two hundred, and of course beyond. Um, it's those lower number Amazing Spider-Man that I'm really focused on. So Amazing Spider-Man, I want the full run, uh, and then I'm thinking also like one through maybe one fifty or so for X-Men. Um, I'm looking at that as well as uh, a run that I like to pick up. So those are my two favorites. Outside of that, 
I'm not too crazy about the runs. Um, I had to break myself of that hobby, of that habit, just because runs take up so much room. And again, that's, again, where I'm trying to be a little bit more selective. Um, where I have a run of something or almost complete run, I'm not getting rid of it. I'm holding it, but I'm not really trying to feel it if it's not Amazing Spider-Man or Uncanny X-Men. So that's kind of where my head is. And then outside of that, it's about picking up keys, of course, of Amazing Spider-Man and X-Men and then some other things, other keys. And I really try to only buy um, what interests me. You know, um, books that I really want, that's where I'm really trying to, to focus instead of getting every, every key that exists. It's more about getting the keys of those characters and or teams that really interest me. And that's kind of what I was alluding to in terms of like my, my thinking is starting to evolve and mature a little bit um, as I've spent more uh, time in the hobby. And so Brett has to say so many avenues of comic collecting. Brother, there are so many and it's like none of them are wrong. Right, none of them are wrong. I think you just have to pick the one that works the best for you and 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 just run with it, you know. And Daniel is saying, "Amazing Fantasy, that is the one. Amazing Fantasy 15 is it. I came as close as Amazing Fantasy 14 in a shop one time, <laughs> but no 15. I actually didn't buy that book, and I probably should have. Probably should have picked it up. Um, when it comes to collecting, it's about quantity, not not quantity." Yep, I would agree with that. I would agree. I would agree. So again, that's why, you know, again, my thinking is starting to evolve and I'm really starting to try to be more selective in like what I'm picking up and what I'm spending my money on. Um, and I actually have something coming out soon where I'm going to uh, test the hypothesis that I have uh, about not just my own thinking, but maybe about the thinking of the comic book community as well. So a little bit of a cliffhanger there for you guys that uh, should hopefully uh, be showing itself in the next week or so. Uh, King of the Golden State says he went to a shop in Fremont today. They had way too many comics, no keys though. Was it um, was it uh, on Maori? Was it on Maori? Mark Spector, how you doing, brother? It's good to see you. I'm wondering if it was on. Uh, I do it all the time. Go through boxes, thinking there's going to be a lot to sell. Wind up with two, exactly, Brett. <laughs> uh, no, so you know the thing is, um, I'm not I'm not the biggest on like cons, um, primarily because I'm not the biggest on like crowds and lines and things like that. So I've probably been to in my adult life one con, and that was because I went to go meet um, Stan Lee, and so that's one con that I've been to. Uh, as a Kid, I've probably gone to a couple, well, let me restate that. So I went to one major con to meet Stanley, and then I've gone to one minor con uh, in the Berkeley area, Berkeley Comic Con or something like that. But as a kid, I went to a couple uh, to meet Mark Bagley uh, and to meet a couple of other artists and to get some books signed. But I'm not really uh, big on the, the traveling for the purpose of cons because I travel a lot for work. And like I said, I'm not a big fan of lines and things like that. So um, what I will do, however, is if I'm traveling for, to, for work for some reason or another, I will try to escape and get to a comic shop. Uh, and so I'm liable to pop up anywhere, anywhere in the country, you know, depending upon how my travel schedule goes. So uh, Ultra 7, 7 says he likes Thor. All right, so let me see here. I'll get caught up. Uh, Amazing Spider-Man full run will be a killer. Uh, to like the thousand power brother there are people out there that actually have the full run of amazing spider-man you know but i'm a big amazing spider-man fan and so um if i see an amazing spider-man book i pick it up and let's just say stay tuned because what uncle was thinking may have been related to asm let's just say that um quantity quality is better than quantity people ask me how many i have i tell them six long boxes of x-men and wolverine hulk 181 uh that he bought for 343 in 2003 now uh one uh hulk 181 i'm sorry one 180 is on Lairway at mile high very nice so um buff muffin asked if i'm getting any recent books i am 
And I've been debating like what to do. So just recently, man, I picked up uh, this Green Lantern book, even though I'm not a Green Lantern fan. I picked that up uh, for my comic war and I actually plan to read it because I wanted to read a DC book. I'm reading um, The Immortal Hulk, even though I haven't read anything since like issue three. Um, I, I do still pick that up because I will read it at some point. And then I, I am a big fan of X-Men, as you guys know, so I'm picking up Extermination. And then I'm also picking up um, the new, um, picking up the new FF and I'm picking up uh, Spider-Man. And then there's a couple of odds and ends books that, I, that I'll pick up uh, every once in a while. Like I, I just uh, told my guy to hold um, Web of Venom for me, the one shot by Donny Cates, because I want to read that. I was reading the whole Thanos thing from like early on. Uh, before the Cosmic Ghost Rider stuff was even announced, I was already on that one. Um, but I, I don't pick up many new books, but I do pick some up and I do read them when I have the time. So, um, said it before, all the low ASM are keys due to the first appearance and events in them. Ex exactly. Bro, I mean, pick a book and it's a killer. Right? Pick a book and it is a killer for X Men or Amazing Spider Man. And it's like, you never know where to put the cutoff, right? Like, you could say it's this number, but then you're like, ooh, but that cover is really cool. Or it's the first appearance. Oh, or it's the second or third appearance, right? So, no matter where you draw your line with X Men or Amazing Spider Man, you might end up moving it for one reason or another. But, um, you know, I may, I may, I may, uh, continue picking up those those runs so king of golden state says close it was off of maori oh i know that place yeah chris's comics yeah that place is rough brother um they have a lot a lot of books crammed in that space they really do and i think there's even more in the back if you can even get your way back there um but yeah i i don't go to chris's comics just because i tend to hit when I'm going down that way, that's like way back in the cut for me. And so I tend to go to Treasure Island off of Maori. I like the uh, the owner, Alex, there. He's a really good guy. So I like to go in and chat with he and Chris. Um, and that's one of the three comic shops that I hit in the area. Um, I don't necessarily get to Chris's all that often. So I've been there maybe, maybe three times. So uh, Escape Comics. Uh, and Berkeley has a second floor full of short boxes and long boxes of silver and brown. Wow, I may have to hit that place up. I think I've seen that when I've you know been traveling out with the family and I'll type in comics and see what's in the local area. I think that I've hit seen that place. I've never been. Um, and then King of Golden State says he's three issues shy of a full ASM run. That's impressive, my friend. That is impressive. Maybe one day I will get there, you know? Um, looks like Buff says he's just finished off his uh, Amazing Spider-Man uh, run, volume two. Congrats on that. Title I've never gotten rid of since it, wow, that's impressive. Kate's does rule, there's no doubt about that one. Um, poor man's comics, looks like he's about to hook you up, King of Golden State, you may wanna take him up on that one. <laughs> he also says that, that uh, is, I think that comic shop has dried up is what he's saying. So there's a lot of really cool shops in the Bay Area, man, if you're willing to jump in the car and go driving. So I'm gonna uh, recap for you guys and then I'm gonna go ahead and get myself out of here. I've definitely enjoyed this chat. This has been a little bit more of a freestyle uh, you know, chat for me. Normally I have a little bit more structure to it, but I've definitely enjoyed just having you guys throw out some questions and just kind of responding to it. Again, this is what makes going live so much fun in my opinion is you just never know where the conversation is gonna go. So the first thing that I wanna do when I do my recap here is I wanna give a shout out to my buddy, uh, Great Matt, who is uh, Gray Matter Hulk. He sent over some really cool books uh, to uh, to be given away as part of Trivia Night. He's a former winner of Trivia Night and he turned around and used my box and sent some stuff back to me, which I really appreciate. I always thank people uh, for sending anything, right? Because they don't have to do it, but I think it's awesome when people do. Uh, the first book that he sent over was Generation X number one. This is a really cool book. Uh, wrap around cover, some foil action, and this book will be made available uh, at a future trivia night. So stay tuned for that. He sent over X Factor 109, really cool book here. So that one is going to uh, to also be given away at some point. Little 90s action, some uh, newsstand Spider-Man number 19, really cool there. Number 18, another newsstand copy. 
Then we have Uncanny X-Men 169. This is when Angel, I believe, loses his wings. Really cool book. Couple of, it's actually in really good uh, shape. Couple of spine ticks, but this is, this is a nice book. It really is a nice book. And then the last one he sent over is Batman White Knight. And this thing is actually really, really darn clean. I didn't really look at it the first time, but it is really clean. Uh, Batman White Knight number seven. Uh, I think this is seven of eight. I think that's what I just saw. Really cool book there. So Gray Matter Hulk. Thank you, brother. I definitely appreciate it. He also sent a really nice note. So that is cool of him. And then the last thing that I uh, did as part of this video was actually ran through a really cool story arc that I recently became aware of called Earth X. And as part of this chat, I actually learned that Alex Ross did the cover art for this stuff. So that just makes it all the more cool. I just thought it was just an amazing story uh, from another uh, YouTuber. I learned about this thing. Um, and now I'm hearing that Alex Ross actually did the artwork so that that's a bonus, right? So I picked up the full story arc. This thing is a 12 part story arc and um, I'm not gonna give it away, but it is a pretty awesome read from what I hear. So if you guys get a chance, you may wanna check this one out if you're looking for something to read. And I think what's cool is that I think they used bits and pieces from this Earth X story uh, line and they introduced a couple of things that happened here back into the main timeline for, uh, for Marvel. And, uh, with, and I thought that was really cool. It's kind of like what happened with like Miles Morales, for example. He was off in the, on the Ultimate Universe doing his thing. They realized he was really cool, so they brought him over. There were some really cool things that happened in this story, um, this 12-part story arc, that they brought back into the main Marvel Universe. Again, some cool stuff when, uh, when someone can create something really cool in isolation and then it have uh, some impact. So... Um, Brett Hess, I'm glad you enjoy them, man. I mean, again, this this stuff for me, I've said it. I'm not going to say it again, but the live streams are really fun for lots of reasons. So I'm glad you guys were able to hang out a little bit with me. I love, you know, just the, the chat and being able to mix it up with you guys. Um, I, I hope to be able to... Um, to go live a little bit more. Um, I need to figure out what my schedule is going to look like, but maybe once a week I like to go live if I can find the time. So, um, awesome hearing you read my text from my, <laughs> all right. So went to art, Alex Ross rules, went to art school with him. Oh, very cool. Dude, I watch his videos on YouTube and this guy makes like paper and paint sound like the best thing ever. Right, like he'll sit there and talk about paper, and I'm like, dude, I don't know anything about paper, but I am intrigued that you think paper is that deep. Um, I think it's I think it's really cool when people are super talented and super passionate about something, and they are able to verbalize that passion and make you appreciate it. Um, a little bit more than you otherwise would have, you know? So I, I think that that's really cool. He's all, he's a really talented guy. I, maybe, maybe Brett, you can tell me why he wears the shirt and tie everywhere. Like he is not your typical artist kind of guy, right? The guy wears a shirt and tie. I'm still trying to figure that out. <laughs> Uh, so Daniel says the X Factor is uh, X-Men 41, Enter the Age of Apocalypse. Oh, very cool. It's after. Very cool. Very cool. That Age of Apocalypse. I had part of that story arc and ended up letting that thing get away from me. I uh, put it in a box and um, it got away from me. But I had the one where uh, Wolverine was... He was... Um, he was... Uh, what was that? He was one of the horsemen of Apocalypse. I can't remember which one, but I had that book where it was it was in there and he got away from me. <laughs> Who's better, Alex Ross or Bob Ross? <laughs> I'm not answering that question. <laughs> King of Golden State says Alex Ross looks like a politician or a principal. He honestly probably looks more like a uh, like a like a principal to me. Uh, anyway, guys, I want to thank you guys for spending a little bit of time with me uh, today. 
I have enjoyed you guys. I hope that you guys have enjoyed this chat. If you haven't checked out the videos that I released this week, you may wanna do it. The one on scarcity versus rarity that I did with Whitewell Comics is an incredible, incredible video. So check that one out. We also did a really cool one on the differences between uh, 9.8s and 9.6s two really cool videos. So if you guys get a chance to check those out, do so. There's a little education, a little fun. Um, and if you're just wanting to be entertained, the What Was Uncle Thinking uh, series is a, is a fun one to check out. But like I said, I appreciate you guys hanging out for a little bit. And if you need me, you can always find me here or on Instagram at Reggie Collects. Thanks a lot.